Hey, excuse me. We're doing what we can. Oh, hi there. Why am I writing on this old timey typewriter, you ask? Well, uh,. It kind of fit the theme. Hello and welcome back to My Tech Order. My name is Caitlin and I make random fashion videos on the internet for fun. But today we're doing something uh, a little bit different. I broke out my uh, good old fashioned typewriter here today because I need to relearn how to party. It's been a long 18 months of basically not seeing anyone, not going anywhere and not hosting at all. I'm a little rusty. I don't know how to do it anymore. How do you have people over? What do you serve? What, if any, games do you play? I am at a loss. So I turned to no better source that I could think of to get me through that. And that source is the past. I'm gonna let home office Caitlin explain what we're actually doing today. So long story short, I was at a vintage store at the side of the road, as one often is, and I found this book tucked up in the corner with a few other books for $5, and I thought, hmm, this could be something. What I discovered was the Cokesbury Party Book by Arthur M. Depew, and I very quickly found out it is a book from 1932, this thick, all about parties what to wear to parties, what type of themed party to throw, what games to host at that party, what refreshments to serve, what else you need to do to be a good host for any given theme that you choose from this book. And I looked at it and thought, that is the weirdest way to get a glimpse into what parties in 1932 were all about. So it looks like the author was from Florida, but he basically wrote about themed parties you could host all year round. Now, this was 1932 in the midst of the Great Depression. There are a lot of really interesting games in here that don't really reference it, but are very much of their time. This book is intended to meet a need in the social life and recreation field for an entertainment guidebook that actually plans the party. Essentially, the core concept is that he gives you the theme, he gives you the invitation copy, he gives you the games you can play, he gives you the activities, the refreshments, everything, all in one handy dandy spot. So I was trying to think of what type of party I wanted to practice with for this video, and there were a couple of honorable mentions, such as a a celebrity costume party where you could either show up as celebrities of the past, the past before 1932, aka basically just presidents, <laughs> or the present, aka just silent film stars like Mary Pickford and Douglas Fairbanks. So if you wanted to be contemporary and modern, that's the way to go. These parties range from the more commonplace, at least in North America, to the more out there. One option is a shipwreck party where you are encouraged to show up in torn clothes that look like have just been in a shipwreck and life preservers and you play games associated with shipwrecks and surviving them, which I suppose was maybe a more common thing in 1932 than it is now, but it was a uh... It was quite an interesting read. While it is a costume party, the costumes are easy, as one is just supposed to wear what one would pick up hurriedly were ye in a shipwreck and all were hastening to get to lifeboats. There's also a pirate party where you treasure hunt and uh, search for booty. Not that kind of booty. I looked this book up online because I was trying to figure out if this was a common book that was often used for party giving. And what I did find was that there are actually many, many different versions of this for sale today, which lead me to believe this was published in multiple contexts and over multiple years. So I thought, what party could I host as a party of one, just for me alone. And I discovered a little bit of an interesting one. While a pirate party or a shipwreck or celebrity party seemed pretty engaging, I thought what was most interesting was actually the radio party. Now I know what you're thinking, radio? <laughs> really, is that, that's the most 
interesting thing in this book? Well, no, but it's, listen, it's just the most doable right now, okay? Because I don't really have a lot of time to film these, so this is just what we gotta do. So I just want to read you the opening paragraph because I think it is so far removed from anything we would ever do now. What is so full of ideas for a pleasant evening as the radio? Nearly everyone has a radio and almost everyone is a radio fan. The things associated with radio and television will furnish ample ideas for active and mental games for almost any group. Could we? Hey, excuse me. Basically today we are going to do some activities from the suggested activities in the radio party. We are going to learn more maybe about radios and we're going to have some refreshments a la 1932. Okay? Oh, also listen to the radio. Maybe. So I have this historical cake book and essentially it has decades and decades of famous American cakes in it and one of them is a 1930s depression era cake where they used meringue as essentially an icing or a topping because there was a lot of concern about waste and of making sure that you're using all the ingredients you have because you may not know when you might be able to afford them or even get them again so i think this one is a great one to serve at my radio party with some tea Welcome back to my kitchen. For longtime viewers of this channel, you may recognize it, or maybe not, from my baking artisanal bread video where the cupboards looked a little bit different. We are in the middle of a kitchen reno, so please be nice. <laughs> I'm gonna level with you. This is the only cake I could make from this book that I had all the ingredients for, but thankfully, luckily, it is a 1930s recipe. So let's do it. I also realized that this cake was actually a really great recipe for just using the things you already have in your pantry. It's basically just eggs and cinnamon. This shot was also supposed to be an example of how good I am at separating eggs, and I realized at the end that I never pressed record of me actually doing it. So here we are. After making the cake, I reread the recipe again, and it said I needed four egg whites, and I only had two left over based on what the recipe told me to do, so I was in a bit of a pickle, because I couldn't substitute. Okay, well, I can't use a substitute for egg whites. Okay. Uh, okay. Why don't I just cut the meringue recipe in half? I think this will work. Four large eggs. I reserve two of the egg whites. Two large egg whites. So why do I need four? Okay, I'm just gonna go ahead with the whole recipe. Let's see what happens. <gasps> okay, I have what I think is a brown sugar meringue. That's stiff peaks, right? I'll say this, it's not a looker. It looks exactly like the picture. So I feel like that boats well, but I didn't have the pecans, 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 pecan, pecans, pecans. I don't have the pecans, so we'll see how it tastes though. On to the party. I wish I had a period specific dress for this occasion, but I do not have any dresses from the 30s. So hopefully the 40s will do. This is a gorgeous uh, Auburn vintage day dress. So I'm trying. My hair is also very straight today, which is not very 1930s at all, but we're doing what we can. So I am basically ready for this party. I've got my tea as a refreshment. They say that you should serve coffee and tea 
iced or hot depending on the season. So it is August right now, so technically I should be serving iced tea, but uh, I like a hot tea with a piece of cake, what can I say? And this <laughs> spice cake with meringue icing actually turned out so... Can you focus? <laughs> so well. Oh, I wish you could smell this, oh my God. If I served this at a real party with real people, and not just me, I feel like this would be a hit. I haven't tried this yet. Ooh, it's just a really nice spice cake with kind of a chewy top. It's not icing, but it's very sweet. It's kind of brilliant. I mean, saving the egg whites from some of the eggs you use in the cake to just make a meringue for the top. That's thrifty uh, baking. I think that's brilliant. It's a good use of ingredients too. I might actually continue to use this. <laughs> it is missing the pecans. 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 On top, but I can always make that for next time. Can you imagine? In the 30s, you're just kind of attending a party. Got a nice little meringue cake. Sipping your tea. Having a good time with your buddies. Ooh, that's nice. You know when food's so good, you just want to dance. Okay, now that we've had refreshments, the real party begins. And by real party, I mean one activity because I can't do the other ones. Uh, because there's no one else here. In the activities for this party, you basically need to put on your own radio and television program. Now, the one that I found particularly interesting under this section is the gymnastic relief section. I don't know if this was a common thing in the 30s and I just find it very interesting that there's essentially like a jazzercise break in a radio program is how I'm interpreting this. But essentially, here's what it looks like. The first thing on the radio program should be sitting up exercises. Have a good leader who has been coached in advance to lead the following songs, asking the guests to go through with the exercise. Basically, one leader sings the song <laughs> that is written here in the tune of a different popular song of the day and just leads the group through essentially Simon Says. I had to look up this song because the tune is in brackets, smile the while you kiss me fond adieu. So I didn't know what that was. So I literally had to Google it. And what I found was that it's not, that's not the title of the song. That's a lyric in a very popular song called Till We Meet Again, which is a very popular 1919 Great War era song about your sweetheart essentially going off to war and thinking about them while they're away and then you know, keeping that memory alive until they come back. And it's actually kind of a very melodramatic, sad concept when you think about it. But apparently for a radio party, it's the best for gymnastic relief. Essentially, I'm gonna play a little clip if it's not copyright protected. Um, and if it is, I'm just going to substitute uh, another song and we're just gonna have to pretend, okay? Here are the lyrics. <laughs> and to the original song, and this is essentially what you'll be copying. Can you hear it? Okay, we get the gist. So I, I am only one person and I need to lead this group of one. So basically I'm going to um, play both roles in this scenario and, and see what happens. Okay, friends, are we ready? Yay! Smile a while and give your face a rest. Stretch a while and ease your manly chest. Reach your hands up toward the sky while you watch them with your eye. Jump a while and shake a leg there, sir. Now step forward, backward as you were. Step back and forth. Then reach out to someone near. Shake his hand and smile. All right, well, uh, <laughs> I am sweating, so I guess that was gymnastics relief. So the thing that gets me about this radio party is that there is so little um, radio. 
<laughs> actually being played at this party. They don't, because they consider the radio more like what we would consider today more like TV or podcasts, I think the concept of this party was more about celebrating the radio itself and putting on your own radio programs and playing games associated with the radio. There's one game, for example, that also includes writing down every make and model of radio that you are aware of. I thought about doing that and then realized I'm not even aware of one. <laughs> so couldn't play that game. There's also another game where you have to put essentially initials on a placard on your chest and sort of walk around and try to find the matching initials that make up a radio station with people at the party, which is actually a really great icebreaker, but nowadays it just wouldn't make any sense. Like, what are you gonna do? Like, <laughs> 102.5, the beat. It just, it doesn't have the same resonance. So it is really interesting to see these parties and understand the context in which this book has been written to sort of entertain people at the time because, you know, entertainment was so different back then also. So I just think it's so cool to step back in time a little bit and learn more about it. Thank you for watching the weirdest video I've ever made. This video doesn't have a point. <laughs> I just wanted to throw myself an old fashioned party a la Cokesbury and uh, just Play around so thanks for indulging me all two of you who will watch this video and if you want to see more weird vintage videos like this let me know because I love looking back at contemporary sources to actually figure out what was going on in their heads and uh, relive that life a little bit do I feel like I'm prepared for hosting a post COVID party with actual other people I mean, I know how to make meringue cake now. I know that apparently gymnastics should be part of every party that you host, um, particularly if it's about the radio. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. If you liked it, don't forget to subscribe. And if you didn't like it, subscribe anyway, because it might, like today, be different next time. Bye. You have to do this now, right now. That's eating. Can you hear it? Hey, could you move? <laughs> could you?